everyone and welcome to the 14th episode of Death Row Executions. I would first like to start off by giving a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed. We made it to 100 subscribers. Yay! (laughs) And I appreciate each and every one of you. I love the comments and I also enjoy interacting with you guys. I have a memory like an elephant, so I am definitely going to remember the select few of you that have been here from the beginning. If you are new here, thank you for taking the time to listen and watch my video, and I hope you like the channel as well. With that being said, today's story is on Lewis Jones Jr., who was a convicted murderer and the last person to be executed by the U.S. government in 2003. Lewis Jones Jr. was born on March 4, 1950, in Tennessee. He experienced physical and sexual abuse as a child, but was able to eventually overcome that and join the Army in 1971 at the age of 21. He served 22 years in the Army and retired in 1993. He excelled in the Army and received medals and awards for his roles in the Gulf War and in Iraq. Now, although he excelled in the army, he had struggles in his personal life. He became a bus driver at the Goodfellow Air Force Base in San Angelo, Texas, after retiring from the army, had low grades in school. On four separate occasions, he had beaten up co-workers and also had three failed marriages in which he was abusive in. His third wife, Sandra Lane, was actually an Army Staff Sergeant who also worked at the Goodfellow Air Force Base, and she filed an official complaint on Lewis in 1995 stating that Lewis kidnapped her, took her to her bank to withdraw money, took her back to her residence, and then raped her. This attack happened on February 16th of 1995. Just two days after this attack, On February 18th, Lewis went back on the base in search of his estranged wife, Sandra. While not being able to find her, he settled on 19-year-old Tracy Joy McBride. And what's crazy is that Sandra Lane was actually Tracy McBride's drill sergeant. And Tracy had recently graduated high school in Minnesota and was only at the Goodfellow Air Force Base in Texas for a two-week training period for advanced intelligence. After her two-week training period, she was scheduled to go to a Defense Language Institute in Monterey, California. Tracy arrived at the Goodfellow Air Force Base on February 8, 1995, and just 10 days later, her life ended. On the chilling day of February 18th, Tracy volunteered for laundry room duty at the base and was spotted by Lewis Jones. Tracy was on her phone talking with a friend when Lewis kidnapped her at gunpoint and being only 5'2", 100 pounds, Tracy was no match for Lewis. There were two witnesses at the time who tried to stop the kidnapping from happening, but when one of the men got close, Lewis was able to knock him out unconscious. Lewis then took Tracy to his house and raped her. After raping her, he made Tracy wash her body and sex organs with hydrogen peroxide and then made her gargle with mouthwash. He laid out towels in his apartment and she was only allowed to walk on these towels in order to prevent any of her DNA being left behind. He then stuck her in a closet while he began to wash her clothes. After her clothes were clean, He put her clothes back on and then laid towels outside leading to his car so that she would not step on anything near his house that would incriminate him to the crime. He also had towels inside the car for her to sit on and he then drove 27 miles away from the base to a remote area in Coke County, Texas and beat her on the head with a tire iron, killing her. I tried to do a little digging and unfortunately I couldn't find any information on why Lewis admitted to the crime. I don't know whether it had to do with Sandra Lane going to the police two days prior or if it was because of the two witnesses that saw him kidnap Tracy. But two weeks after the fatal assault, Lewis admitted to the crime and led police to her body, which was found under a bridge. 
Her head was crushed in and she was wearing her U.S. Army battle uniform that was clean because of it being washed by Lewis. She had no undergarments on and there was no forensic evidence on the clothing and there was no forensic evidence of rape either. The trial started on October 16, 1995, and there was a 12-person jury. And being that he kidnapped Tracy McBride from a military base, his charge was kidnapping within special maritime territorial jurisdiction resulting in death. And for this, prosecutors chose to seek the death penalty, which was supported by the McBride family. And what's interesting for me about this is that in Minnesota, the death penalty was abolished back in 1911. So if the crime happened in their home state, he would have received life in prison. But during the trial, though, Lewis's attorney by the name of Timothy Floyd argued that Lewis had brain damage and it would cause him to fixate on things and not be able to deviate from a course of action that is driven. They also tried to say Lewis had Gulf War syndrome from exposure to nerve gas in the Gulf War and that he had post-traumatic stress disorder. Prosecutors claimed he had a history of aggression and violence well before he accrued any brain damage and that the crime was well thought out. He was ultimately sentenced to death and he was sent to Ellis Unit where death row inmates are housed in Texas on June 11, 1996. A few years later, Lewis was sent to a newly opened prison unit to house death row inmates, which was the U.S. penitentiary Terry Hot. After eight years and his final appeals failing, it was time for execution day. He had a final meal of nectarines, peaches, and plums. Tracy McBride's family and friends were there as witnesses to the lethal injection execution, and Lewis said his final words. He looked at the witness room and mouthed, I love you, which is pretty strange to me. And then he said, Although the Lord hath chastised me forth, he hath not given me over unto death. After that, he began singing, Jesus, keep me near the cross. After his execution on March 18, 2003, Tracy McBride's mother said, Today was a day of justice for Tracy. It's been a long eight years and the healing process is not over. Lewis Jones Jr. was 53 years old at the time of his execution and to this date was the last person executed by the U.S. government. Thanks for taking the time to listen and watch this episode. Let me know what you think of this story in the comments below.